more. Uh, uh, uh. Welcome to Team Fortress TV with Admirable, Ryushi and John. We're here for ETF 12 Season 16. Yep, it's part of it, Blackout Gaming. But this is Team Fortress TV. We're going to be watching some week six action between Epsilon Esports by Fragnet Networks and Roberto. It's going to be Pro Viaduct and Snake Water. Ryushi, are you feeling spooky? Um, I'm actually not wearing any skin right now, so yes. Full on Jesus. spooked. You got me spooked, man. I was just like... Pfft. I've just woken up from a little power nap there, man. I'm not sure if I'm dreaming or not. Casting with a skinless man, but... The team seem very uh, determined to start on time tonight. They're actually complaining that we're late and it's only a minute or two past the quarter past. They must be going out for some mad Halloween parties tonight. I am not. What a lonely existence. I live for it, you? No, I, I've got to agree with you here. There's, there's this huge party that I'm just not going to because I can't be asked and... You know, TF2, TF2, yeah, yeah, I'll blame TF2, that's what it is. Modern life is rubbish. Ips is asking me as well for interviews, so yeah, I guess we're going to do interviews afterwards, but uh, in terms of the teams we're looking at here, if you're unfamiliar with the scene, Epsilon Esports are world champions undefeated in, like, uh, Jesus, everything. a year or more, over a year. Pledge would be able to tell me the exact number of days and hours, no doubt, but he's I think gone to lost League of since Legends. Like V6, have they? Um, even before then, online. I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, they got Roberto here, a roster who had been looking good at the start of the season. They won Division 1 last season, came up and uh, won their first two games, but then started to falter when their Star Sky Aphage went missing. Since then, they've mixed things up. They've brought Stark from Pocket Solar to Scout, and they've got Ips from Backup Roamer to Pocket. And Ips obviously used to play for Team Infused. He's a beast. But this is a new roster. Every time, every season, we always hype up each team that plays Epsilon as maybe the ones that beat them, but don't hold your breath, man. Don't hold your breath. Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was distracted by people coming to my door. Brick or treaters, you know. You need to trick those motherfuckers because you're I... casting tier 2 right now, baby. Yeah, I know. I've, I've, I've locked it now. You need, like, a rope attached to a bucket of water above your door. The doorbell rings. You pull the people get soaked. Uh, it, it's good, but I, I I don't really have much time to set it up right now. Yep. Yeah. In terms think. of uh, priorities at the minute, I think you should go with casting TF2. Maybe we can run an ad at halftime. Yeah, and you probably. need those ninety seconds to set up a devious trap. Yeah, we'll go with that. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Don't mind me. It's just the power of Halloween. Uh, uh, I hear okay. one team ready up. Both teams, I think. We'll ready up momentarily, and we're going to go live here for this ETF 12 Season 16, powered by Blackout Gaming Premiership Week 6 fixture. No, 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 you Vars crashed, Vars crashed. This is, this is, they're, they're, they're going to have to re-RR. <laughs> 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 Epsilon don't have to restart until the round is over. I would, I would take this one. No, they have restarted. They're going to do the nice thing, even though Mike's <laughs> calling for a default. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll run down the rosters real quick, uh. Yeah. I'll let, take me through the Epsilon. Well, I mean, if you don't really know Epsilon by now, then you really don't know TF2. But of course, we've got our German super combo on the flanks of Stefan and Bash on Scout and Gear running as Aroma. And then the slightly more English uh, combo combo of Numlocked on Demo, Mike, Super Pocket Soldier on Pocket, and Raymond. Mike is Welsh. What? Mike oh, no, 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 he's Welsh. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ooh. He's going to kill you, man. He is. He is. Oh dear. Well, Raymond's <laughs> definitely English, I think. It's the he's same got, thing, right? He's got, he's got an English flag. Yeah, it's all the same country, you know. But anyway, yeah, Raymond's English. Um, no sexy French calls coming out of him, but, you know, he'll, I'm, I'm sure he gives his best. Boudin. No angry French calls from Knox, who is now playing for Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. On the, the Roberto side, you got Ethug playing the sort of passive scout role. Made his name an element on violence, then switched it up to Roberto a season or two ago. Uh, he is partnered now on Scout by Stark, who, as I said, just switched from Pocket. You're going to have Hohi Demoman from Lithuania, who's really starting to step up his games, looking like a real Premiership Demoman can put out the damage. And uh, I think Ips is going to be giving him a real hard time trying to brush up his game for him. But, uh, oh wow. The squeaky door in my house, that's just uh, haunted, isn't it? Then you have uh, Bar on Medic. He's just really, he's crazy. 
He seems to be the whipping boy of the team. You got Ips playing the pocket soldier and rising on rumor. My room is haunted. Well, I think. Uh, I I think I think Viaduct is probably the most likely map to give us an upset from any match ever. So hopefully this should be quite good. You know, I mean Stark. What he played for Team England as scout last year, 2012. The Nations uh, Cup, is that right? Um, two seasons ago, two Nations Cups ago, yeah. Not, not this yeah. year, but last year, yeah. Yeah, because it was Greg and Stark with the scout. So he, he's obviously a really, really good scout. And it was his main for a long time, so he, now that he's back on that, I think he's going to oh, yeah. be really good. He can be a beast sniper as well. I'm not sure if that's going to be their strategy tonight, but he really can snipe some hit, some six shots on LAN as well. He did snipe, I think, on Viaduct, if I remember correctly. They played Viaduct a little bit, and I remember saying to Stark when he came back, just, oh wow, I saw you play at LAN, it was amazing. All the headshots he was hitting, but he didn't think he played well at all, but maybe he will snipe. One to watch out for, I guess, but uh, I'm still expecting Epsilon to smash it. Yeah. Ten I mean, minutes, both maps. Yeah. Just so lower this, your expectations, yeah. everybody. Everybody just calm down. It's... It's it's not going to be big. It, it, it's still Epsilon. They're still showing amazing form, even with the medic change. So we can't really expect much. Be do great they really if, have a team that challenges it. them? You know, not really. I mean, the the best one that I I thought could challenge them was um, Impractical Project, and of course they folded. Impractical Project. Mm. Yeah, I that thought they been... were better, especially once they picked up Rib. A lot of Damn. people thought it would have been Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, but they don't seem to have gelled. Oh, are we actually going live this time? No, I think so. Bar hasn't seemed to have crashed this time. Touch wood. Just gonna load up the medic card. I can see it is medigun, medigun. No crits, Craig. Just I'm watching a gear coming onto Bulgari. He's gonna jump high and far behind. He's being spot out by Hui, though. He's trying to use all his stickies to kill gear. Eventually, does get that frag. Numlong's also picked up Ethug in the same period of time as. The soldiers of Roberto go ham, both jumping in there and spreading out a little bit. Managed to pick up three frags and got Raymond for their troubles. The three remaining Epsilon players go hard here to try and find Bar, but his position is good and he's just, he's up on that little cliff. He's got all his players there all around him. And it seems like Roberto had a, a really well thought out strategy in the middle, or they, they, at least they executed something with that double soldier again. They didn't see exactly what happened though. Yeah, it, well, basically, Rising jumped straight over the top of Cliff, whereas um, Ip sort of jumped onto the sort of uh, wooden balcony bit. And of course, Rising was right in their faces, and Ips was just able to put down like what looked like 400 damage rockets. So, obviously, Numlocked and Raymond not really surviving that. Yeah, you know, Ips is a bit of a, a master strategist. He puts in a lot of time, or has done in the past, watching a lot of demos, especially of Americans. And this is a map that's been played several seasons before us in America. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Ips has a clear idea of how he wants to execute middles and previous teams he's played in, uh, particularly uh, towards the end of his time in Infused, he'd lost control or at least lost the respect of the team and probably things weren't being executed the way he wants it, but now he has revert up here, they're sort of, uh, they're slightly in awe of Ips, you know, they have this sort of Prem legend on their team and he's probably having a lot more success with a keen team like this who wants to listen to him. I know it's just like five minutes into the game, but a little bit of theory crafting for you there as two Ubers get popped off on this middle row issue. Uh, yeah, uh, Epsilon trying to get in, but they get their Uber forced out in a not particularly uh, good position as Huey takes down Raymond. Revert losing a few players into counter kill though, but with their Hermetic still alive at bar, they should be able to come out of this with a huge advantage. Yes, Stefan goes down, and in fact, e Epsilon, they're all on the point, but they're all really, really lit. They could very easily get cleaned up here, and they do start getting a double kill onto Numlocked and Bash. Huey got taken down, but it should be enough for them to hold the point. And of course, bar does have that, well, 50% advantage, basically. So again, that. That was a really nice hold for them. Epsilon were trying to go for that sort of that suicide play to try and force the medic or something, but it didn't work, and they ended up Ubering versus the Uber. And they're, they're coming in again, actually, completely raw. Uh, nothing coming in, and Ether goes down once again, really early in the fight. But Rising jumps in, trying to get some kills at Epsilon. Nasho in their dominance, they're getting a double kill, but Mike goes down there. Are they going to actually be able to do anything against this Uber coming out of uh, uh, Bar? They can't find Raymond. If they're trying for him, Starkey's on to Raymond. Oh, he can't reload the crossbow in time. Stokey gets the frag. Ips got gear as well. And Roberto are giving Epsilon a little bit of uh, schooling here. A homeschooling 
Just like Epsilon, Mike. Oh yeah, how did I crowbar that in? I don't know how, how, how did you, I, I didn't get it. Not old enough in TF2 terms to understand the reference. Sorry Mike, he's homeschooled man. He's a unicycle wow. champion. But anyway, wow. there's some great videos there from Mike's uh, homeschooling group. But, ah, it's all backstory. There's a game going on here, Roberto are creating an upset. Sure, it's only one round. Raymond switched up to Critzkrieg. If only I had the Twitch chat open to see if that joke had uh, just gone down like the lead balloon it went down on here, live on the cast. Epsilon's well, gonna push in dry here. Going for it, Ryushi. Yeah, the, uh, the the dry push seems to be working really well for him there. They take four and only lose one. And that's a really good situation that they find themselves in, especially as they've got that uber advantage of... I'm not quite sure how they managed that, because Roma went down and Bar didn't. Oh, it's crits. Ah, okay. That's why. So, of course, they'll be able to defend really, really well with that. They've got a lot of time, though, for Roberto to push back. So, Roberto shouldn't be feeling too worried right now. I mean, all they've got to do is basically cap the point, and then they've won. I mean, it's only nine seconds. Oh, dear. It's a tough one to defend with crits. So, they are going to pop off early. Ethel gets taken. He's gone down early at every engagement. The bar doesn't matter. Rising will trade with Mike. Numlock finds a second stick. You want to start both scouts are down here. And that was going to be powerful for Epsilon as the red combo move forward here and try and get some frags. But all they need to do is cap the point. They don't need to commit. Try and push any. And now the scout adventure is coming strong for Epsilon as they pick up two. Gear comes in as well to find Eps. Flash gets Hui and there's the respawns now as Roberto's scouts get back into the game. They're just going to keep throwing themselves forward and they need to be careful they don't let Epsilon back into this one. Probably should have just been happy not to continue with that push, maybe regroup, but... They've gone in, they've died, and now Epsilon have the advantage yet again. They're still in that crit streak, but maybe Roberto know about it this time, if they remember. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure they must do. But it's not going to be enough last time, I think, when they popped crits, Bar was on 95, so he was really able to counter that as early as soon, pretty much as soon as they lost Ethel. But the suicide wave coming in right now, uh, Raymond drops his crits, and that's going to be huge. So Bar's going to just sit and spawn, build it, and then come straight back in with that uber hammer to destroy whatever Epsilon have got set up on the point. Yeah, Hopefully. Roberto have really teed themselves up here for a chance. Could be a slam dunk as long as they execute correctly. They uh, suicide it in there because the team that doesn't control the point actually spawns much faster. So it's very much the viable strategy. Now they're going to come in, they've got the charge. Epsilon are running the cookie cutter lineup. There's no threat of snipers. Bar can hold on to this Uber until he feels genuinely threatened. Gonna see Gear jump behind immediately. He gets spot out by both Epsilon. Oh, the Roberto soldiers, sorry. And uh, Ethog actually claims the kill there, but that was Epsilon's big roll of the dice there to pop off to get the force. Oh, but Bash comes in the long con. Comes in behind two shots. Bar, the Uber gets dropped. And it looks like Epsilon will hold here. Bar did not click in time. <laughs> All he had to do. on point. Oh, Huey. Huey. Come on, he's on 40 health, Huey. Oh, he gets down. It's not over yet. So it's still close. a very fast spawn yeah. wave here. They could do it. In comes the spawn. They've got 20 seconds on the clock. They won't have buffs, though, probably. Bar is there, actually. They will get a little bit of health. They're going to have to go for it, though. 10 seconds. There is, of course, overtime if they crits. stand on the point, and it is active. The crits for Raymond. Oh, it's going to be a meat grinder here. He chooses to pop off. He's just waiting for the exact moment. Here it comes. Oh, it's an absolute carnage here, and it's slaughter. Unbelievable games everywhere. This is true Halloween action. I was watching Ips' point of view, and he was just waiting for that crit to come out so he could jump in, but he wasn't able to kill at Raymond fast enough. And that is a really, really nice first round right there. Go in the way of Epsilon. But come on, did you expect any less? I did. I thought at several times Roberto could have held on to it there. Uh, they started strong, they sort of got thrown off by the good decision from Raymond, whoever called it, definitely. Uh, put Roberto off their game, but we're on to another point anyway. Gear's gonna jump in directly onto Bar, lad the rocket, which he serves well into safety. Meanwhile, Ips has gone down to Bash. Numlocked will get that frag onto Bar following up the damage of his rumor. And Rising as well goes down, so no soldiers here for Roberto. This is the game they wanted to play, they wanted to leave it so that their scouts could clean up, but Raymond has survived, and that means. Sorry. Yeah, he yeah. has survived as well, so they won't be able to push in against that demo man just as they'd hoped. Uh, I think that last round actually it all came down to Bar dropping that Uber. As unfortunate as it was. Yeah. Now we're just going to be watching Revert. They're just going to go for the suicide wave uh, once again. I mean, it's a legit strategy and, and it works really well. Bar perhaps in a little bit overextended right now. He actually gets in the face and then Mike just air shots him away. And Roberto just collapsed. Yeah, they wanted 
probably to go for the suicide way there, I guess. Well, if they were, what, what, what was Bayer doing there? Was that just a soft push against Raymond's Uber? Or is, it, or is he running crits? He is still running Uber, but sometimes, whenever you're playing this, you want to show your medic at least a little bit so you're not entirely telegraphing the fact that you're going for a suicide wave here or a, you're going to send all your players and die. You want to show your medic a little bit just to leave that. Uh, Raymond drops to Huey. <laughs> wow. He does get it eventually, and there's still plenty of time on the clocks here. It is ticking down in favour of Epsilon as it hits 220 on the blue clock. And uh, we're going to see Bar move out. They're just going to go for it now. I think they're going to use the heal advantage. Look at them. They're all coming out, moving up onto that cliffside. Bar is moving forward slowly, but surely almost as that charge. Well, they've got man advantage. They've got huge uber advantage, especially as Bar's on 9%. So just hoping he doesn't drop this, and they should be able to retake the point here. They're looking for the stickies, gears behind the gear comes in, timed bomb there with Mike. Immediately three frags come in, they sacked three there to get that. And Raymond didn't escape, both medics struggling to get the position right in terms of those suicide waves. Raymond did not get the memo, he has gone down. And that uh, uber force, man it paid off for Roberto, they got the yeah. medic. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure what, what Raymond was doing there. Um, was he escaping, or did he actually have, or, or had he just spawned? Because it looked to me like he just spawned and then come out. But anyway, uh, it's a mistake. Mistake by Epsilon, perhaps. But Ips is going to be the first frag in this thing, r rising as well. Ether, Huey, oh, everyone no, no. falling apart, but Starkey goes behind, takes down Raymond, and I think Bar made that out alive. Yeah, he's almost back at spawn. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a point for, for Epsilon, but uh, Bar's got, what, 60% advantage? And just going to, you know, they're... Again, it's just going to be a retake, an easy retake for Roberto. Ooh, Especially as Mike goes pressure. down right there, and that's going to be their point. Surely they should push off this. Yeah, this is going to make the that sort of solo effort for Mike is going to make the, their next suicide potential just that slightly bit less potent. L look at the position of Numlock here. He is uh, definitely pickable. Uh, there's Stefan going to go down to Rising. He also gets Numlock. Uber does get popped off here. And uh, Roberto Raymond going forward. down again. Wow. He didn't actually see his position there. Where he, was he? He, he? he was on point and Huey chased him down with sticks. There's something behind him right now. Solly's jumping in on Bar. Bar just survives on 24 health. Mike and uh, not going to be able to take him down. But, you know, Huey actually doing a lot of work for his team. He's uh, second scoring in points on the uh, scoreboard. So he's getting a lot of frags out. Yeah, you can see him putting out this damage the whole time. He has been one of the players to survive a lot. I had. Oh, I'm, I'm expecting to see the stats at the end, and I think he would have quite as many deaths. Right now, yeah. he is just spamming sticky after sticky into these Epsilon players who are trying to Raymond, walk again. Raymond goes down again. Oh my uh, Starkey god. Starkey and Bar, though, fall to a couple of uh, quick things, and Epsilon. The Raymond's positioning seems to be hurting them a lot. It's not good. Not, not, not what you'd expect out of uh, last season's Epsilon with Nox, but it doesn't... You know, they're able to work off their teamwork and their flank players to overcome that, I think, but it's not helping them. Yeah, like, I don't know exactly what the Epsilon strategy is, but the sort of, the standard thing you see here is suicide waves where you keep your medic in spawn, you don't commit him at all to the push, but both medics have been dying. Uh, Raymond doesn't seem to be getting the protection, maybe he just isn't uh, anticipating the dangers, whatever way you want to read into that. Uh, right now, though, we're seeing both teams trade a lot of players and revert were coming out the worst. Bar is positioned close enough to escape through spawn, but it looks like, uh, the soldier, Ips is going to get eight. It does get the frag onto gear. Tries to juke the rockets from Mike, but the mini crits associated with that escape plan will send him to the spawn queue. Now the remaining five players of Revert will move forward from the right hand side. Uh, they don't have charge yet, and they've. Oh, they're all taking a lot of damage here from Numlock, who's able to spam all five players as they come through from the one side. Stefan is getting the cleanup here as he finds Ethug. Uber gets forced off. Bar doesn't have it yet. He's got 50% to go. He's going to have to pull out a miracle if he wants to get that one. And. Uh, Seems like the Uber timers were slightly misread there, or I don't know. Roberto went for it, and they got punished. It's like Epsilon are gonna cap out here as soon as this point decays. Well, I think it was the, the sort of the desperation push. It was obviously just a almost a second round for Epsilon, so they had go for it, and it was just un unlucky that if they, they just needed that five more seconds, but they didn't have it. So I'm going to be watching uh, Raymond's actually positioning for this whole point because he seems to be getting picked off even like in these first middles as well. So he's jumping his soldiers in, he's staying on the thing, he jumps down immediately whereas I think Bar was jumping in, staying on the cliff a little bit more. A couple of players going down right now, Gear and Rising. 
And it looks like Ips jumping behind. He actually jumps straight onto, j jumps out and jumps back in again. And Numlock gets taken down from his damage by Stark. So that's a lot of damage. And a mic down as well. So a lot of trying to be cleaned up. But Epsilon having to back up. They're only on three against four. But they do have their medical life. Raymond still staying up. He's losing health fast though. Taking quite a bit of spam damage right now. Huey chasing after him. But not going to be able to do anything. And Rever uh, don't actually take the point out of this. They hesitated for a second there. They had the opportunity. They're all sort of scrambling, trying to keep Bar alive. But that, at that second, the Bar died, man. They could have just been going ham to get Raymond, and they didn't. They allowed him to just drop back, heal up, and with the spawns coming in, Epsilon will be able to keep their medic alive and shore up the defense is there. And it looks like Epsilon are starting to get a more solid foothold onto this game. Sure, they had a few uh, sloppy moments where they lost Raymond, but equally, Roberto hadn't done a good job of keeping their medic alive. And Epsilon, the scoreline says it all, man. As exciting as it's been, it's still 2-0 Epsilon. And it yeah. looks like they're uh, in the driving seat here for this third round. Yeah, like, you know, Epsilon, they've been said, they, they take a while to get going. And perhaps this is uh, a bit longer than they used to take. But they're still going to get going, and they're still going to be Epsilon. Raymond trying to fight a scout, and that's a, snipe, a spy, sorry, start coming in. But he gets shut down by Mike, who jumps him. And Roberto, again, they're going for the show supply. They tried to go for the uh, spy and the sniper, I think. Is that Ips on sniper? I did not see that. Oh, uh, oh look at this uh, forward hole here from Ips. And both soldiers double rocket spam doing a lot of damage. They have got the foresight. Bar actually ubers as well. He ubers even though three of his players are down, and that's just pretty much wasted. Look at Rising here. He's struggling to decide what to do. He realizes this is a horrible situation. Bar is going to run back to spawn and start to build again, but Raymon also uh, already has 20% on him. And uh, maybe if Bar just saw his players dying in front of him, the right thing to do was not Uber and walk back there. But he did pop after three had died, and there was really nothing his team could do to take advantage of the seconds he'd milked with that Uber. We're going to see Huey go in and die. Rising as well previously did does respawn. It's going to be five on six here as Roberto going against an Epsilon team with a strong defensive position here. They've got that advantage as they hold the middle point, able to spam downhill. And immediately Roberto are left running with their tails between their legs. they got to get out of there, man. They need to just calm down for a second and decide how they want to try and get back into this round. They've yet to get any time off that clock. Still three minutes on the red timer. Yeah, and Epsilon are holding really close to what I'm... I'm like actually spawn camping or is he just watching the doors? Rather extended. I think he was spawn camping there. He, he actually had stick traps on the door. And he's, he's now taunting Roberto. He actually might go down here to a scout, but no. <laughs> Stark, he, he pipes him down to the face, but goes down for himself. Gear going down as well, but Roberto losing too many players here. Once again, that Uber coming out of bar on that right side into Raymond's face. Trying to get as many kills with it as possible. Mike is actually going to get out alive here somehow. This is a good situation for Roberto because the spawns come in so fast for them, the fact they don't hold the point. So even though Epsilon are thinking, yeah, we picked up three frags there, trade at Ubers, this, it's not good for them. They're about to get smashed with the Roberto spawn wave. Look at them getting onto the point here. Sure, there's still three minutes to go, but now there's a glimmer of hope in this round for Roberto. This is match point as it stands, I think, for Epsilon in Europe. They play first to three in America. It's first to four. Uh, it's rising with a big air shot there as well, by the way. Got to call that out. But uh, Roberto, they still got a, you're a chip at a chair, is in poker? Wow. Yeah, Epsilon actually, Ray Raymond again coming out of spawn. He's, he's switched to crits right now. Um, but no, 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 he's staying back in spawn building. E Epsilon just going to run this four man suicide wave. Uh, actually, taking quite a lot of spam out from Huey right now. Gears jumping in with only 83 health. He just gets shut down by a meat shot from Stark. Mike going down as well. And this spawn wave complete failing because Bar's got beautiful positioning. Numlock jumping in, jumping in, he gets taken down as well. And Bart hasn't even taken any damage out of this form wave, and that is not what they needed to do with it. It's just wasting time at the moment. Although they are trying to build that crit. I'd love to see Roberto make it up. They've been holding um, defensive every time. Like maybe they could step forward this time. Or maybe after the next attempt at suicide wave. No, it looks like Epsilon might actually commit to this one. Raymond has left the confines of that spawn area and now moves forward onto Cliff Epsilon or trying to size up their opponents here. There's a sniper on the field, it's Bash! He hasn't been spotted, he hasn't made that shot. It's actually crit screen! Oh, Ryushi, what the hell's going I, on? Well, I called that. I don't know why you weren't listening. <laughs> Stark, Rising, Ethug all going down at this crit. But Huey comes in. Big Huey taking down Raymond, taking down Bash. Is he going to be able to get any more? He looks like he is. He takes down Mike with the creator. And Epsilon, he's behind him. Uh, 
sorry, Mike is behind him, but doesn't manage to find anyone. Ipsen shuts down him and Gear, and Roberto, they, wait, hang on, how did they not hold that? I'm confused. I thought everyone went down for Epsilon. I'm watching the kill feed here, and I'm wrong. Oh dear. Epsilon holding the point. <laughs> Ten seconds left, Roberto needs to go right now. Lumlock's already pre-firing stickies onto their combo, they've taken a little bit of damage. He's hoping that this guy can clean up his back, but he's getting focused himself. Flash giving them jukes here on the right hand side as Mike comes through as well and Revert are gonna get wiped out. Epsilon Ouch. will hold. It's about to decay on the point. They're gonna make it 3-0 and that is GG for this first map. Pro Viaduct RC4. We're gonna go to Snakewater, the new version G7. That's coming up shortly here on Team Forest TV with Admirable Ryushi and John. Who stood out for you? on that map. Who, whose performance were you enjoying? I think even though they lost, I think Stark did really, really well. He got some important picks. He seemed to be doing really well as a scout and holding his own against uh, the combo of Stefan and Bash. But just his team were not able to match up uh, player by player. I think only him and, in a sense, in, in some ways, Huey was as well. Yeah, Huey seemed to be putting out big damage. Ips is saying... Oh, no, he's not saying anything worth repeating. We're going to go to map 2. It's going to be snake water. I'm going to bring up the logs. Let's see what's happening. Um, pretty even, to be honest. Looking at him. Bar, top damaging in the medics. He got 240 damage. Raymon only 38. Come on, come on, Raymon. Step it up. Come on, you're supposed to be high prem. 38 damage in one match. With this new crossbow, he's just not trying. It's not trying. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's like six times the damage. Uh, Numlocked up there at the top. 40, 80 damage per minute. Hui, 400. Close. Close enough. No cigar, though. Uh, hmm, yes, yes. Very interesting. Look at the kills from Numlock, though. 31 frags. Mike with 27. Really uh, doing a great job at cleaning up for Epsilon. Doing work, in fact. Uh, the KD ratio is the kills and assists per death. Very stacked in favour of Epsilon. I suppose you would expect that since they won 3-0. But, uh, yeah. Despite how um, close those first rounds looked, it seems pretty dominant by Epsilon, actually. When you look at the stats. Look at the stats. I think the only weak point where they didn't quite match up player to player was Raymond. I don't think Raymond... I, I think in that case, although Bard did drop one, uh, in fact, Raymond dropped two, so that must have been two... No, there's a crits and an Uber. Um, and I think Raymond was really, really their weakest point there. And if they can, if, if teams can really play off that and really make sure he's never alive, it's weaker positioning compared to Epsilon and his perhaps weaker plays. Um, I think that that's the way to beat Epsilon. But of course, you've still got to go through Epsilon to find Raymond. So. Yeah, well, that's the whole the, the dynamic of it. Like, your medic going down isn't necessarily the be-all and end-all if the enemy team had to spend like three, four players to get that medic pick it ain't worth it, I'd happily die every round, every middle if my team was going to win 3-0 uh, not even concede a single round sure, I'll be the bait, I'll die please, please kill me 